Tian, son of Fu Qin Zhao, the greatest of the Zhao military leaders, a man without bounds, unlimited strength, incredible wisdom, and love for things of beauty and power, a man without want or need for companionship, a man of clairvoyance, who effortlessly slays those who stand before him, the son of the great emperor, a man of filial piety, a man of leadership, and a gift from the gods. The man of the prophecy, the one who can bring the people of Zhao to victory over the enemy states, and bring peace to China. Tian returns to his father, where he kneels before his feet in sorrow after the loss of the decisive Zhao battle. Wu Qi, please forgive me. The army was lost and I barely escaped with my life. Wu Qi listened to the pleading of his son and accepted the loss, for the bond between him and his son are unlike any love the world can comprehend. Go, oh, Tian, and rest for you must fight another day. Tian leaves his father after a deep and honoring bow and rests in his chambers. Why, O oh great powerful Tian, my namesake, can I not prove myself worthy of the throne to the father whom I love so much? Tian leaves his chambers in search of a new meaning and an answer to his questions. He casually walks through the rioting crowds of people demanding rations, passes a nearby brawl over a mere scrap of bread. He arrives at an oracle nearby the palace. He steps inside, and the oracle greets him with silence. Tian kneels before the oracle and asks, What will become of me, O wise oracle? What is there to behold in my future? She silently etches some characters, which most could not read, and threw them into the fire. The fire blazes to life and then settles, leaving the charred bone with a new inscription. She begins to read. The bones foretell a great future ahead of you, Tian. They speak of a mighty weapon in the cave down below, guarded by a horrible beast, and with this weapon you will achieve a grand victory. Tian, filled with joy, leaps home to tell his father of what he has learned. Tian pleads his father, asking him to let him go retrieve the magical weapon to achieve the victory for the Zhao kingdom. Fu Qin hears his son's pleas and accepts, hoping that the people of Zhao might have a hope for victory. Before Tian leaves, he blesses his son and sends him on his way. Tian gathers up a silk scroll, ink, a week's worth of rations, and a short sword with its sheath, and begins his journey to the world in the This portion of the script is lost. It's believed by scholars that Tian travels to the underworld in this section. Tian begins to feel the heat rising and knows he's in the right place. He arrives at the cave of Yan Huren, the salamander guardian of the Shang Li Gong the bow of victory. He sneaks inside the cave and notices the hideous beast resting. Being careful not to wake it, Tian tiptoes towards the back of the cave and sees the bow. Amazed by its beauty, he gazes at it for multiple hours, entranced. Tian herein wakes and senses the presence of Tian, quickly rising, shaking the ground as she stands. Tian quickly awakens from his trance and attempts to run, to escape but it's too slow because of the salamander's extreme speed. What are you doing, licking me from my slumber and gazing at my illustrious bow? I am destined to take this bow from you. By right of the Zhao Emperor, give me the Shangli Gong. Foolish prince, no mortal shall ever hold the legendary Shangli Gong. Then I will take it from you. Tian reaches for a short sword and attempts to slice the salamander's neck, but the sword shatters on the mighty armor of the Hero. Silly mortal, you think you could defeat a mighty beast like me? Tian quickly tries to scramble away, but is back into a corner of the cave, and she runs up to him. Tian herein prepares to strike, as Tian quickly reaches into his pack, hoping for something to save him. He happens to grab the ink and throws it at the salamander's face as a last resort. Tian herein, blinded by the ink, shrieks as it begins to seep into her eyes. Tian runs towards the bow grabs it, and the quiver of eternal arrows. Tian here and hears the sound of Tian, and runs towards the bow. Tian quickly knocks an arrow, and aims for Tian Huren's head. He releases the arrow, and the arrow pierces through the eye of Tian Huren, who screams and falls. Wu Xu, the mighty dragon of the underworld, hears the cries of Tian Huren, and knows that the prophecy of the Shang Li Gong thief is true. He fears for his life, knowing that the prophecy of swoops out of the underworld below and begins to take the journey towards the kingdom of the Zhao. Tian stands at the feet of Yan Huren, amazed at his own victory over the beast. He holds the weapon in his hand and stares at it in marvel. 
A day passes, and Tian is wakened from his trance, only by the rumbling of his own stomach. Angered by his ignorance, he quickly sets out on the journey home. As Tian begins to get close to the kingdom, he sprints out of anxiety for his father and the hope of approval from him. But, as Tian clears the forest, he realizes he will never achieve that dream. Zhao is desolated, burned to a crisp. The charred world of his childhood stands before him, desolate of life. Tian falls to his knees and weeps for his father. He finds the ashes of his father near the palace and prepares a funeral service for him. He placed the ashes in a makeshift grave and offered sacrifices of his remaining rations. Then he removes the ring from his hand that was given to him by his father. The ring was Tion's rite of passage into princehood. As this ring was given to me, I now return it to you. This ring is my rite of passage into greater life, and now it shall be yours. Tion stays at the grave of his father for many days, weeping without end. Then, in the distance, he hears the cry of a man. He quickly arises and searches for it, calling out to find the sound. He finds him after some time buried under the rubble of a house. With his strength, he frees the man who is named Ban Lu. Ban Lu recognizes Tian and bows before him in honor, but Tian quickly sweeps him up, telling they are, that they are now equals. Ban Lu tells Tian of the destruction of the kingdom. It came from the sky like a punishment from our ancestors. Eternal fire rained down on the people, and the dragon charred all in his path. Your father stood to fight it, but could not defend against the dragon's flame, and burned before the palace. The dragon, Mushu the Legendary, desolated the kingdom and destroyed everything in his path. I was lucky enough to get knocked out by some rubble and was left for dead. Tian, saddened by the story, continues to weep for his father for four more days. During his grieving, Ban Lu finds another survivor who goes by the name of Peng Yu. Tian awakens from his sadness at the news of another survivor and runs out to meet him. Tian then realizes his anger towards the dragon Mushu and formulates a plan. Angered by his ignorance and wasted time weeping, he quickly sets off on the journey. Ban Lu and Peng Yu quickly join him, gathering supplies before venturing off. This portion of the text is lost. Scholars believe that Ban Lu, Peng Yu, and Tian travel across China and interact with some of the other kingdoms. They arrive at the border of China and realize they have no way to cross. Peng Yu, being a craftsman, quickly sees the bamboo forest nearby and decides that the group should make a raft to sail across the East Chinese Sea to Japan, where Mushu awaits, living in his island. As they arrive in the forest, they set their gear down and begin picking up bamboo stalks when they are approached by Ji Fang, the prideful panda. Ji Fang swoops them up in his massive paws, glaring at them with great yellow eyes. You dare to enter my bamboo forest and steal my bamboo? Who art thou to think that thou might steal from me, the legendary Ji Fang? We need your bamboo, almighty Ji Fang, to make a raft across the East China Sea. And why would you need to cross the treacherous East China Sea? We are on a mission to avenge my father and kill the mighty dragon Mushu. <laughs> Foolish humans, you think you can defeat the dragon Mushu, the killer of a thousand souls, the desolator? No one can defeat him, not even I, and nobody but him can defeat me. Tian quickly looks around the jungle for a way to escape. But are you not the mightiest of all the beasts? Is it not you who can slay one thousand and one souls? Have you not desolated all of those who enter your forest? Well, of course. Maybe you are not as foolish as you seem. I have slain all of those who have come into my forest, as I will to you. Notices the pandas so he continues. I am sure you have many a great story to tell of your amazing strength and power. I have not heard of you much in my kingdom of Zhao, and I am not aware of your abilities. Your kingdom has not heard of me, the mightiest of all beasts, long ago, I... The panda looks off into the distance, telling his tail, and is distracted enough to allow Tian, Mandu, and Pengu to slip out of his grip to the ground where Tian notices his back with the bow. He sneaks over to the bow and reaches to grab it. Song's story ends as he realizes his prisoners are missing. Yi Fang leaps to his feet. Well, you were wise, young prince, but you shall not escape my rage! Tian knocks an arrow and aims, but cannot aim because Yi Fang leaps towards him, causing a mighty earthquake to dismantle. Tian is knocked to his back where he lay defenseless, stunned. Yi Fang prepares to stomp Tian's bones to dust, and Peng Yu slashes at the legs of the panda. The sword goes deep and sticks in the Yifang's trunk like legs. Yifang roars in pain and sweeps at Peng Yu, sending him flying into a bamboo patch. 
Fong, blinded by rage, leaps towards the same bamboo patch and swipes at him mercilessly. Han Lu, who had been retrieving his gear, hurls a spear into the panda's thigh. Ji Fong screeches and torts Han Lu. Ji Fong grabs a bamboo shoot and swings it at the head of Han Lu, but Han Lu dodges behind another sh bamboo shoot. Tian, in this time, has regained his stance, where he knocks back an arrow and sends it into the back of Ji Fong's head. The incandescent rage stops suddenly, and Ji Fong's fiery yellow eyes turn a dull gray as he falls onto another bamboo patch that pierces through his heart, ensuring his death. Tian gathers his gear and prepares to set off, but Ban Lu stops him. Peng Yu is dead! Are you not going to mourn for him or prepare a funeral for him as you did for your father? Tian says nothing and continues gathering bamboo. Ban Lu holds a quick funeral for Peng Yu and runs after Tian. They gather enough bamboo and construct a raft. They also build a makeshift mast out of bamboo after skinning Ji Fong to create a sail. The wind carries them deep into the East China Sea. The wind begins to pick up and the sea begins to roll. The waves pick up and begin to toss the raft back. Tian, I don't think we're going to make it. The storm is coming. We should turn back. Tian refuses and continues onward. The waves begin to lift the raft into the air and slam it back down, where the passengers clutch to the raft for dear life. The sea tosses them around in a rage, slamming them with waves of water. The world around them turns dark, and the waves continue to beat Tian and Ban Lu mercilessly. Tian, clutching the bow in his right hand and the raft in his left, holds on as the waves send them spiraling into an eternal storm. Ban Lu clutches the mast, but the force of the waves snap it off, sending him deep into the depths below. Tian doesn't look back, but continues to hold on, hoping for an end to this maelstrom. Tian wakes up to find the storm has stopped and the taste of foreign sand in his mouth. This sand is not like the fine lowest of China, so he knows that he has reached the island of Mushu, whether by luck or a gift from his ancestors. The raft is missing, except for the single bamboo shaft which Tian was holding onto and Ban Lu is nowhere in sight. Tian searches the beach to find any remaining portions of their gear, but does not find any. He continues his journey deep into the island where he knows he will meet Mushu. This portion of the text is missing as well. Scholars believe he encounters a fountain of prosperity and a source of food where he replenishes his strength and rests for a few days. Tian stands on a hill and looks to the sky where he sees a dark figure. The beast swoops down to the plain below the hill. Tian looks into the fiery eyes of his enemy, Mushu, and sees his massive body coated in a red scale armor. The massive dragon stands before Tian and the two lock eyes. So it is you who have come to fulfill a prophecy. It is you who has slain the guardian, Yan Hiren. You who has traveled so far. You who has defeated the prideful and foolish Shi Fang. You who has crossed the treacherous. And y you who has drank from the fountain of prosperity. I have come to avenge the death of my father. I will only receive retribution where your eyes no longer burn with the fire of the underworld, and your fire is no longer fueled by the souls of the defeated. Tian grabs his bow and knocks an arrow and aims at the head of Mushu. He does not even flinch. Mushu stares back at his opponent without fear and lies. Your father died a pitiful death just as you will. Your ashes will join me in the underworld, where I will release my rage on the whole earth. Where nothing will stop me once your heart no longer beats. This is your end. Mushu rises into the sky and breathes a column of fire down onto the hill. Yan rolls down the hill, dodging the flame. At the bottom of the hill, he attempts to knock another arrow, but Mushu is quick and sends more fire down. Yan continues to evade the endless rain of fire. Tian manages to send a few arrows at the mighty dragon, but not even the magic of the arrows can pierce his armor. Tian and Mushu battle for hours without victory, until Tian is standing again at the top of the now charred hill and stands tired. They sit with eyes locked in an endless battle of gazes. You fight well, and you are worthy of your prophecy, but it shall not come true. Today, you shall burn beside the hill where you stand, and you shall gaze up and join your father in eternal matrimony. Your reign shall end. The terror of the mighty dragon of Mushu will be no more. Tian releases an arrow, and Mushu opens his jaw, releasing the flame of a thousand souls. The arrow, lit with the fire, hurls through the tough armor of Mushu and pierces his heart. 
Mushu's column of fire strikes the Shang Ligong and lights Tian ablaze, quickly eating away at his own flesh. Then the fighting stops. Mushu's flame burns out and he falls below to the desolate hill where he will lay for all eternity. Tian's skin melts with the weeping of a thousand dead souls and he too lays a pile of ashes on top of the hill. The sun rises over eastern China and the war is no more. Peace has been brought to China. Tian now sits beside his father, giving those who deserving like Tian and his father the mandate of heaven to lead China into many more years of prosperity.